Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Ellen Penske, and on behalf of Packet Fusion, I want to welcome you to today's Lunch and Learn. It's part of our overall series that's helping you to see clearly in 2020. And I know many of you have attended our monthly events, and we do definitely appreciate your interest. One of the topics that's generated a lot of interest in, in our 2020 series is about Microsoft Teams. We've had many different sessions, but this week we're focusing on how Fuse works with Microsoft Microsoft Teams, including how to move between Teams to Fuse calls and meetings. The hint is that it's seamless. And for those of you who don't know, Fuse is a global cloud communications collaboration software company connecting the digital workforce. Their mission, which I absolutely love, is to change the way people communicate so that they can do their best work. Who doesn't want that, right? So today's presentation will be about 45, 50 minutes. We have time for questions at the end. Um, it is a large audience, so we will be muting our phones. But if you want to ask a question, you can type it in the questions box. And I wanted to let you know that we'll also be recording today's session and we'll make it available to you. And now I'd like to introduce our speakers. First up is Packet Fusion CEO, Matt Pingator. Matt has 30 plus years of experience in the telecom industry, and he's acknowledged as an industry leader with a wealth of knowledge and experience about getting to the cloud. Today's featured speaker is Mark Bloom from Fuse. Mark is the director of North America Channel Sales from Fuse, and I think that's a recent promotion. We were talking about Mark's career, and so congratulations on that promotion. You've actually been with uh, Fuse for about three years, and um, you're known as a dynamic entrepreneurial sales executive with over 20 years of record achievement and demonstrated success. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Matt to take it away. Well, Mark, with that uh, promotion, maybe we should update the picture and I'll, uh, I'll update <laughs> mine as well. Um, Thanks for coming aboard. I appreciate it. We're looking forward to having you. We're gonna have some fun today. You and I have known each other for God at least five, six years now in this uh, in this crazy little world of UCAS. You know, we've been following each other's uh, success over the last several years, and love what you guys are doing, and love where you guys are going. There's a lot of a lot of competition in your space, which is uh, it's crazy. The UCAS market is hot right now. Um, so you know, I know you're partnering with teams. And we love teams as well. Um, and I'd love to hear how you guys, you know, combat teams on your own without partnering with them. Because I think you guys have a pretty compelling offer. I think there's there's room for, for everybody in this ecosystem. And you guys have some pretty compelling value propositions. I mean, just for one, I love the fact that you guys own all your own technology. You're not using a Cisco Broadsoft switch and then somebody else's contact center and somebody else's this, that, and the other thing. And you guys have your own your own stuff, and that's 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 big. Um, you do have some partnerships that are really cool, and I know you're going to talk about those. And I want to first apologize. I know you were a little disappointed when we sent out the meeting link for this, and we've got well over 100 people attending this, so this is cool. Um, but we did put it in Zoom. Uh, and I know you guys have your own webinar platform that you own and you guys use and you sell and maintain and prosper from. So we want to hear about that. And again, next time we do this, it won't be in Zoom. It'll be in yours, I promise. Um, but with that, I know we got a lot to talk about. It's going to be an open session. You and I are going to banter back and forth. I'm going to turn it over to you, Mark, and I'll let you run with it. Yeah, I appreciate it, Matt. Uh, you know, I'm a stockholder at, at Zoom as well, so uh, it's okay when you use their platform. So it uh, always makes me money, money when other people do as well. So, uh, but uh, really appreciate, uh, you know, Packet Fusion putting this together today. They're one of the, um, they were just acknowledged as one of our um, Rookie of the Year partners. And so we really appreciate uh, just the great work they've done and, and how they work with their customers. And, and it's just uh, amazing partnership that we're just, you know, really scratching the surface on, on really taking the next level. And so, you know, one of the things that we want to talk about today is, is understanding Microsoft Teams, because I think that with all the, the challenges out there with that COVID has really put upon us is that really trying to work, you know, make the, the employees have the best experience at home with all with Microsoft having such a, a powerful um, presence in, in, you know, every IT environment. You know, we know that, you know, when we get leads come across to, to our plate is that 85% of them have a Microsoft Teams question inside those, 
those leads that we get. And so when we started, you know, working with Microsoft in really developing the product, we really listened to our customers to get um, that information out to them and, and show them really, you know, how to work with us and them at the same time. Or if you like our solution, it's better, you know, just abandoning all the other Microsoft Teams. And so what the purpose of today's webinar is to do is to really go through and understand, you know, how Microsoft Teams works and then how a company like Fuse can actually work with Teams. So when we're going to break off and start doing is work with um, the licensing aspect of it. And so when you look at basically uh, everything that they have is they have a home license, a business license, uh, the enterprise, which most customers are uh, used to using, whether it's E3, E1, E3, E5. Uh, and then they have others um, basically for uh, education, government, nonprofit, and then frontline workers. And so um, there's other licenses that are still active, but they no longer promote. And what that is, is that, that Office 365, they're basically moving away to having it Microsoft 365 is what they eventually want everybody to, to move over to. And with Microsoft 365, they're adding certain products like security, Windows 10, and all those um, bells and whistles to it to make it uh, attractive on it. And so anytime that you see a five by the, the last number is, is that the phone licenses are actually included into those. So it, whether it's F5, E5, um, you're, you have that basically that notation to it is that you're going to have that phone license going to be basically included into it. And so um, Microsoft basically they recently uh, realigned their licenses. And so the, the licenses that they have listed on their, on their web page are basically the education, whether it's a student or staff. They've got the government, which is G1 through G5. Um, the nonprofit, which is business basic, biz, business standard, um, E1 through E5. And then the frontline workers, they basically have, um, you know, with the F all the way through F5. And so the difference between E1 and E5 is pretty simple, is that with E1, you get all the office uh, apps online. You get Microsoft Teams to where you can IM, you could do voice calls between Microsoft users in the same company, and then also have video chat as well. You get the email and calendar um, that are included. You get OneDrive for business. You get the exchange online uh, protection, then the ability to archive. And then when you add E3 to it, you get all the existing um, applications there on E1. And then you get the Microsoft Office Suite. You get the cross-platform installation. Um, you get the data loss prevention um, and stuff like eDiscovery. All these things from E1 and now E3, they're, they're combined on it. And then once you get over to E5, again, it's everything that's E1 and E3, along with the uh, My Analytics, the Advanced Threat Protection, and also the Customer Lockbox. So basically, as you can see, the, the big differences between E1 and E5 are, are it's quite a bit. And so when we're looking at E3 versus E5, because this is where, where most of the licenses pretty much sit, is that all the licenses include collaboration. So again, you're able to message within the, the teams um, with guests and internal users. And then also video meetings and internal calls and then real-time document collaboration. So if you're sharing uh, a contract or a PowerPoint presentation between uh, employees, you can. And so if you look at the pricing on it, the basic license for E3 is, is $20. And then for Microsoft 365, which basically has Windows 10 and everything included, you're looking at a base price of about $32 per user. And then once you move over to E5, you can see that, that there's about a $15 uptick in, in cost. And then when you go from um, Microsoft E5, there's actually you know, quite a significant price jump there. And so um, you're also gonna have third-party app integrations with that. So uh, products like uh, Salesforce or anything else that you want integrations with, you can have. And then again, of course, with E5, you're basically gonna get uh, all the telephone features from PBX to a PSTN uh, conference dial-in, and then also the ability to port in numbers. And so what we're gonna talk about now is adding the voice capability to it. So when you have the basic E1 license, if you wanna have the ability to call, you're gonna to have to pay through Microsoft and there's no way really um, around it because of the direct routing capability is that you're gonna to have to pay the $8 license to bolt on to have any phone usage for um, to be able to call domestic or international. 
So once you add that, you're basically going to pick whether it's domestic or international, you're going to add to the plan. So for the basic cost to add a phone license, you're looking at $20 for domestic and then $32 for international. And then once you move over to E3, that license cost is basically now you're looking at the $20 license cost and then the $8 fee that you have to add on. So you're at 28. And then to add the domestic calling plan, you're looking at 40. And then when you got the international plan, you know, you're looking at, you know, a much higher cost. And so as you move on to E5, of course, that $8 fee is, is, is waved away because that price is already put in there. But you still have to go out there and pick your domestic or uh, international calling plans. And so the way that they do international right now is that they've only have 10 countries that are approved. So Microsoft is not a phone company, nor do they want to be. So over the next year, we think that they'll go out and acquire somebody. But for the time being, they've, they've really struggled on the international uh, calling plan here. They've actually relaunched it a couple of times over the summer and not had a lot of success with it, which is why they actually allowed companies like Fuse, Ring Central, and everybody else out there to work with them to, to supply the calling plans. And so when you're adding phone to Microsoft 365 licenses, is it again, is that the cost is gonna be significant on this. And if you look, again, you're still working on the $8 fee, then adding the calling plan. But if you look at the jump on uh, Microsoft 365, is that it's much more expensive than, than what the office one was. And so again, you look at the $8 bolt-on fee, then the 12 and 24 for the individual calling plans. And then as you move to E5, that price goes up significantly. So that when you're looking at the overall pricing on it, you know, just to add international calling plan, you're looking at about $71 license on E5, all in. And so when you're adding phone uh, and dialing to the E3 plan, is that we have it broken down for you so you can actually see what the, the costs are if you're an existing user. But, you know, as we see is that once they get everybody moving to, to um, existing Microsoft 365 users, is that that price is, again, when you look at calling plans, is that, you know, our typical customer spends all in with collaboration and voice less than $25 a seat um, to use all the bells and whistles that you would get with Microsoft. Not only um, do we have, you know, most of the bells and whistles to it, but we also have a much stronger SLA. And we support over uh, 50 countries when it comes to our international plan. And so when you have to go and actually purchase these services, is that I know this is a little bit of nitro for people, but you can go through and basically pick all the add-on features that you want to it. So not only are you adding the license cost, the, the direct uh, routing bolt-on $8 fee, and then you're also picking whether it's domestic or a calling plan, you're also adding little features onto it as well. So those, that licensing cost could creep upwards uh, of over $100 per seat. And so a lot of things that they don't talk to uh, or cover as well in a lot of the, the messaging is, is that there's a lot of hidden costs for Microsoft. Is that for, for Microsoft, premium support for anything other than basic uh, is required. Um, you know, they don't offer professional services for the design, architecture, number porting, and assistance. That's only applies, you know, if you're using the Microsoft dial plan. It's that, you know, you're going to have to spend significant money outside of that to add that on. And for third-party support, if you want to have it configured to support it, um, is that for that direct dial environment, is that, again, you're going to have to have to spend a little bit extra money to do that. Mark, one of my one of my customers on Teams Direct with the twelve countries is having a lot of troubles too. We're looking to pull them off and doing something with what you're doing or different routes. But something you can add here is they got hit with a fifteen thousand dollar professional services engagement to figure out where the voice quality was happening. Bad voice quality was happening. Turns out it was at Microsoft, and they still had to pay the fifteen grand. So there's no partnership, right? It's you better understand your own network. You better understand Microsoft. You better understand Teams. There's no help. There's no, there's no partnership. There's no relationship. You're calling into a queue and you get lost. I would have equated with dealing with an ex-wife is that you basically have conversations and all of money does is go out the door. <laughs> Thank and, God. Uh, I never had to deal with that. So, <laughs> no, it's not fun. But it's when you look at it, is that that's one of the reasons why that when we do 
our webinars, we talk about Microsoft Teams is that we go through and explain the licensing on it, the hidden cost, because, you know, all of a sudden you're just getting this bill for, for the professional services on it. And it's quite extensive is that when you're even looking at the SLA is that they only offer a three, nine SLA, whereas Fuse offers a five, nine, and I'll cover this later on is that the difference between that is they can be down 43 minutes a month, whereas Fuse is only can be down five minutes a year before you're financially impacted. And so those little things and those little nuances are a big deal on the, in the grand scope of things. So when you look at, you know, even the ability to add EFAC services to it is that you're going to need to replace anything that, that's legacy on it. And so these little hidden costs across the board um, really impact everything. And so, you know, one of the things too is that there's only really five options that you can do with Microsoft Teams uh, when you work with uh, a third party. So the, the, the way that we have this little iTruck set up is that if you're we're using basically managed services, so companies like Synoptic, um, Mesa G, is that they offer a managed services plan to where they go in and do all those things for you, whether they're offering the PBX for you or not. But Majority, if not, and I would say a high percentage, about 80%, um, is on the right where you go direct routing, click the call, and then also the bot integration. So if you see one consistent thing up there is that you see Ring Central and you see Fuse. And why that's important, and it's okay if we talk about competitors, because really, if you're going to do any investigation and working with Microsoft Teams, is that as you can see, if you're only looking at one company like an 8x8, a Mitel, or a Vonage, there's no way for you to get around that $8 bolt-on fee that they charge with Microsoft. When you have the click-to-call, which LogMeIn, Fuse, and RingCentral, uh, all three of us offer, is that we can actually bypass that $8 fee. So depending on the number of licenses and, and, and seats, is that you know we had a deal that we were working on in, in Iowa, uh, a relatively large one, to where we were competing against Vonage and 8x8 in the deal is that we were significantly um, cheaper every single month by, uh, it was almost like fifteen to $16,000 on the difference in, in cost because we could not only pivot from direct routing but go to click to call. And I'll cover exactly what those look like. But really when you have a company that can pivot in any direction is that if you are talking about Microsoft Teams and want to do direct routing or click to call, Really, the only two companies that you should be working with are Fuse and Ring Central. And the good, you know, news there is that you know both companies have experience working with uh, you know smaller uh, mid-market companies, and then also in the enterprise. So you really can't go wrong. It's really going to come down to who has the best overall experience, best pricing, and how well they're actually going to implement it. So we hold our own against anybody out there in the industry, and especially against Ring Central. So we love actually going against them. And so when we break it down on the competitive landscape, you know, these are the people that we run into mostly in the space, whether it's Ring Central, Zoom, which we're doing on today, uh, WebEx or 8x8, is that you're not going to be able to pivot depending on cost or direction. If you choose a provider, you're going to be stuck with going either direct routing or a different way. At least with views, you have options that you can uh, go through. <clears throat> and again, if the price becomes a little bit too much, is that, again, pivoting to that click to call where you get that same type of experience and then work everything through Microsoft Teams, it's a great option that's going to save you a lot of money down the road. And again, there's only us and Rink Central that can pivot and make that move. So, you know, Matt brought up a good topic earlier about, you know, you know who is Fuse? You know, I've been with the company for, for three years and we were born and bred in the enterprise. And so our average customer um, is significantly large, but we can actually go down into the, the smaller mid-market companies as well. So our limit on employee size is, is 250. But if companies have um, less than 100 seats that they're looking on, we'll actually entertain those opportunities. But for the most part, we stay in the 250 employee um, size companies and above. And so that's where we, we are the, like the best fit there. And when you look at a grand scale of, of who we are and what we do, is that we have some of the largest deployments in the world in UCAS. So we have uh, two customers that are 30,000 plus seats with waste management and micro focus to where um, 
with waste management, they're using us at over 700 different sites. You know, we just deployed a deal with uh, the shoe company Skechers to where we lit up 538 locations in less than 30 days. So when it comes to basically working with an enterprise company is that when it comes to the deployments and how the, the product is, is actually deployed, because to me, that's where the rubber meets the road is that anybody can go out there and show you a really nice demo and how the product works and give you an aggressive price point. But the implementation process is really where Fuse shines. That's what we do. I mean, our, our corporate moniker is we take the complicated, and we make it simple. And so working with partners like Packet Fusion that can help you guide you in the right direction of which providers to choose, it's why we're working together because when it comes to implementing an opportunity, we do you know, a great job there. And if you go to the Forrester Wave Report, you know, they'll basically solidify as Fuse as the top product in the space. And so the great thing about the Forrester Wave, and it's a little bit different than Gardner, is that it actually goes in and does an evaluation of your product and it compares it to everybody else in the industry. So that's one of the, the, the reports that's it's really strong because you get to read how the experience was for the people at Forrester Wave doing the, the individual review and then testing the product. Whereas Gardner, um, you basically just fill out forms and send it in and then they, they rate you based upon customer experience. So when you look at basically what Fuse does today, is that we have the, the calling plans, the meeting platform, the contact center piece that, that, that works with it, and then the messaging and collaboration piece that's all bundled under one single application. Whether I'm using Fuse Mobile or Fuse Desktop, that experience is the same regardless what device I'm using. And so why that's important is a lot of the communication devices that we're working with today they offer anywhere between one to four different applications you have to use to make all of it work. Only 8x8 and Fuse have a single platform out there. And the reason why that's, that's a big deal is that all the analytics and everything that we offer on the back end to where you can see who's making calls, who's using the platform, uh, how effective they're using the tools, all that information is built into the AI and analytics to where customers can utilize that information um, to make the platform stronger for everybody else to use. And so as we, we talk about the differences between, you know, us and Microsoft Teams, there, there's a few, you know, when it comes to the, the mobile capabilities, having car mode and Siri integration, is that the ability that I can switch a call off Wi-Fi onto my, my carrier mode without having the call drop. Microsoft, that won't happen. You got to hang up. If you're having a problem with your Wi-Fi and want to go to your, to your carrier plan, you actually have to hang up the phone and then redial in. And so the administration portal, it's easy to use, um, support, services, everything else that we offer up here, is that all these things in regards to like CRM integrations is that we definitely have an, an advantage over Microsoft in, in several different things. And it's not to take away from Microsoft because they wouldn't be the powerhouse that they are in the industry if, if the product didn't work great. Um, the fact that you can have internal calling, video calling collaboration for free, that's included in, in Office 365. Those are things that, you know, when the whole COVID thing happened is that Teams and Zoom really took off in this space because they were giving a lot of the, the stuff free without having to add licenses. And so we talked about basically the, the, some of the calling options and, and the two most popular that, that Fuse has working with Microsoft Teams. Uh, the first one is click the call in Teams. And then the second one is direct routing where you're working directly through Microsoft Teams. Now, the most common one that, that we push is, is click the call. Because not only do you have Fuse on uh, the dialing application inside Microsoft Teams, but the benefit is, is that you get to bypass that $8 fee and you get to work off Fuse's SLA. If you go through and do direct routing, you have to go through Microsoft's SLA and not the carriers. And as we all know is that their um, SLA is not the best in the industry and they really don't apologize for it either. And so when you look at basically the breakdown between the two is that most companies who you know really wanna do that direct routing with them, once they see our click the call option and see 
how much they can um, avoid it, and it's again, there's no additional cost to it, is that majority of our people will look at the click to call option first. And so when it breaks down, what the click to call is, is that it's an update from the existing meeting and bot integration that, that Microsoft allowed everybody to use earlier in the year. And what we did was we added a few features to it to where you can actually make a call inside of Teams. And so how that looks is, is that you have the Microsoft dial pad up here that basically that you pull up in Teams. And then on the bottom left hand, you'll see that little fuse emblem to where you can download that plugin and be right on the Microsoft Teams application. So if you're ready to make a call um, and want to do it, instead of going through Microsoft Teams, you click onto that, that little application, up pop, well, the, the Fuse um, dial pad, and then also your list of contacts so that you can make calls directly um, with our Fuse application inside of Microsoft Teams. And again, this is free. It comes with the product. You can go to Microsoft and actually download the plugin to put Fuse on there. Well, free is a tough word. It's included in your price. True. <laughs> I mean, so what we're finding, I know I love this. This is great. So you're in the Teams app. I can click dial and dial out the Fuse app and live inside Teams. And so right. what we're finding is, while Teams is really good for collaboration and document management and retention and all those kind of things that it does really, really well at, it doesn't do the best job at telephony and contact center and receptionist and contact center, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can do some different routes to get to there, but as Mark alludes to, they get very pricey. And are they really worth that extra added little benefit? I, I would say maybe yes, maybe no. But in Mark's defense, this is really clean and there's no cost for Microsoft to add this. You don't have to add the E5 license. You don't have to add, you can be on E3, probably be on E1. You don't have to add the PBX license. You don't have to add a calling plan. You're doing all that on the few side. So <laughs> really cool stuff. Price too. So when you're adding the phone license into it, you know, we typically, the pricing, again, is going to be below $25 uh, per user. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, we're never going to walk a deal away from a deal on price. So if customers are challenged with budgets because of COVID and, and layoffs and everything they've down and they want it to, to be aggressive with the plan, just let us know up front and we'll work with you on getting a, the most aggressive price that we possibly can. And, and here's, here's a real basic one for you, right? I know they already know the answer, but who, who owns the DID? Well, the customer does. Well, you do. I mean, it's really with you. Well, yeah. you customer owns it, but they're with, it's with Fuse. It's not right. with Microsoft, right? So you're using the Fuse service. You're just initiating it from the team's client. Really cool. So that one of the benefits here, too, that I know Mark's going to talk about later, we always ask our customers when they're looking at Teams, how much faith do they have in Teams? Just from a reliability standpoint, right? I think you maybe you already touched on this, Mark, but I know you're going to talk about the SLAs. Did you already talk about this? I have not. I'm going to steal your thunder. Sorry. So they, they commit to, was it 46 minutes of downtime a year? What is it? 43 minutes a month. A month. So they're, they're saying their SLA is 43 minutes a month and you don't get any money back where most of the other carriers, uh, Fuse included, is five minutes a year, which is five nines before money starts taking and going back and forth and they are striving to meet those SLAs. So the theory is, okay, so if Teams goes down, what then? The beauty is there's a bunch of vendors, Fuse included, they do a great job with this too. I think you can appreciate that. If Teams is down, you still can get your call. You can still have your Fuse client running or have it call your cell phone so you're not reliant on this non-carrier, you know, five nines reliability type architecture that five that uh, that that Teams has built or trying to build and it's not very clean and robust, but this is what Fuse does. They are a carrier. They have their own network. They have their own pops. They have their own international. They have their own dialing plan. So it's uh, just a, a cleaner way of doing things. No, it's a great thing to bring up too, because when you do direct routing and you're going through Microsoft, when it crashes, you crash. Yeah. I, I mean, there are different ways of doing to make sure it does succeed, but for the most part, you're right. There are different ways and different carriers that will offer similar type things with redundant carriers, but they get expensive and it's an add-on to your point. You keep adding on to get these next redundant features and yours is just simple. It's just, there it is. 
It's simple, clean, it's and included. I, I love the word free, but it's included. Yes. Right. So, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a great thing, too, is that um, when you're going through the cycle of looking at Microsoft Teams and then adding the, the voice capabilities to it, is that talking about the SLA is a huge deal. Because especially with everybody, you know, in California, we, we have a stay-at-home order basically throughout the whole state. Um, right before this webinar um, kicked off, I got a message on my cell phone basically putting California in a state of emergency. And so if everybody's forced to work from home, is that you want to basically give them the best experience in case Microsoft does have an outage or anything like that. You can work off something that's a little bit differently. So again, when you go through this process, you know, go through the different angles that you can with click to call and direct routing, because really what's going to be best for you and the most cost effective way is the route you're going to choose anyway. But just make sure that you, you go through both um, sides of the fence so you get to see what the different experience is and how they work. So, so and, and, you know, let's take this a step farther. There is a way, go back to that, actually. Go, I like the one sure. we wrote there. Well, actually, you could leave it here, too. Um, if I don't want to, can I just do click the call and it launches your client altogether without being inside Teams? Yes. So, actually, when you click onto that little icon on the bottom, the Fuse application will pull up. And so... The fact that us and 8x8 are the only single application providers out there is that most people already have this experience using applications anyway. So it's not anything that's out of the normal or anything they're used to when, they, when they're dialing through their computer. Uh, is that, are they, you know, are they going to be able to make a call? And the application basically will pull right up. And again, you get the dial pad usage and then also the, all the contacts that emerged in there is that that calling experience is, is not going to be challenging for uh, the end user to do. It's going to and, be- a And great. where I'm going with this is, is, you know, more redundancy because not only do you guys in your team's cost or your cost get telephony, you also get the team Zoom type experience for collaboration and meetings and webinars inside that same client. So in theory, if you don't like the team's experience, but you love the collaboration, you love the workflow, document management, you could still live inside another tool that's integrated as you're showing here and do the other stuff and save a ton more money on the other side. One yeah. of the places that you didn't put in your cost analysis is the $4 a month charge that people with teams meeting all incur to have a PSTN dial in for their guests to dial into the call. Everybody has some charge, but theirs is egregious the $4 a month for everybody. You start getting up into thousands of people, this gets expensive. Everybody else, you included, does a much better job on the PSTN dial-in, maybe not included, but like incredibly a lot, lot less price. So there's ways if, if pricing is the issue, you can get your free teams and do what you want in there. And anything that has to do with any kind of PSTN, toss it over to Fuse and you can save a ton of money. Absolutely. Absolutely on that. And so when we were talking about um, you know, the basic two ways, the other way is direct routing. And so if, if you're not tied to an existing phone system, a lot of the experts recommend you know, the carrying hoster model. It's basically um, where they have their choice to do direct routing through an SPC. And so customers use um, carriers SPC, which is paired with their Office 365, and then it made its time basically to, to multiple Office 365 tenants via the domain. And so... You know, here are some of the key facts about the carry host model is that since calls are not uh, routed or based on DID, each customer instead gets a unique SPC um, as a domain. And so to the carry-based uh, domain, which uh, is then added as a domain to the, in the customer's tenant, notably all the customers will have the same SPC. And so is that only uh, a wildcard certificate covering the carrier-based uh, domain is needed. So it's not necessary to have a customer specifics uh, certificates on the SBC. And so, so are you guys saying you're doing direct routing as well as the bot integration? Yes. Okay. So, so go ahead. That's where, again, when we look at cost, if that, if that, if all these extra fees and the SLA doesn't meet your thing, the fact that you can pivot and still work inside Microsoft Teams with other providers, you're going to be stuck in this direct routing and you're not going to have a choice out of it. Right. So, so you guys have a choice. You, with us, you have a choice. And so, and so the direct routing is basically trunking for teams. Right now, 
you're in Teams, if you make an outbound call, it goes through their network, what direct routing does versus the bot that we showed you earlier, the direct routing will just take that call, you live in Teams, there's no Fuse plug-in, you're still living in Teams, Fuse is kind of wiped out of this and all you're doing is using one of these carriers, Fuse being included that does direct routing as the trunking, if you will, for Teams. Teams is admitted they don't do telephony well, they don't do the PSPN well, They've got a lot of big international enterprises that need help. And they're really, they've given the, the keys, they've opened up the API. So these carriers and providers can come in and plug in and take over the actual PSPN call. So right. Mark alluded earlier, Microsoft only does 12 countries. That doesn't fly for all of our enterprises. You know, Fuse are in like 42 different countries or whatever the number is. We're, we're over 50, I think we're up to 58 now. One of the, one of the top up there. So now by default, you actually now get to use the 50 countries that they already have their telephony platform in for the delivery and the in ingress egress that you already now get to use that infrastructure by simply plugging into teams with direct routing. So once you get the call to, to, to fuse, they take it from there really clean. So having options is, uh, it's pretty cool. Not everybody has all these different options. Everybody stays in one lane. And I love that you guys have all these options. Yeah, so it, it, here's one of the things, too, is that you can go to a website that basically pulls up all the outages that providers have. Um, and it was funny is, is that one of our, our, our customers that we were in the middle of a sales cycle with had asked, hey, we just had an outage on Microsoft Teams. And so I went directly to uh, this website that basically pulls it up and it goes through all the outages that Microsoft was having that day. And if you look at over at Fuse, no problems at Fuse. And so why the SLA matters is that it, it's a bigger deal, especially if you're a company that relies on their phone service, whether it's retail, whether it's business, whatever, is that you want something that you could rely on and it's going to work. You know, a lot of times when we, when we talk to customers is that regardless of saving the $8 fee, the SLA is the biggest deal when making the decision between click the call and direct routing. If you can have that same experience, and again, it's, it's, it's a, a much cheaper option, but to me, the SLA is, is the big difference, is that you have that strong backbone from the, from the carrier that provides it. And again, both Ring Central and us do this. And so when you are going down um, and looking at and talking to Microsoft about the SLAs that they offer, is that this is something that you really need to dive in and get an understanding from them on how they're gonna support that. Because to me, of all the things in the world, this is the most important. I know that um, when I was in the, in the disaster recovery space, we used to ask CFOs all the time, do you know what it costs for the whole company to be down? And the IT manager never really understood what those numbers were, but the CFO did. And so when they had several outages during the year, I asked them, how much did it cost you last year with the five outages that you had? And they're saying over a million dollars. So to not protect yourself in this regards, it, it's, it's something that you really should put first and foremost is that you wanna put the best plan together. And to me, when you look at us versus everybody else out there, um, really we have one competitor in this space and that's Ring Central. And then again, what's gonna come down to, we both offer the 5.9, we both have a really good product. It's going to come down to user experience, implementation, and the cost. And so some of the key competitive points, and I know this is kind of an art chart for you, but when you look at the inoperability with Microsoft applications is that everybody knows that Microsoft is not the easiest to work with. Um, they didn't even allow third-party phone companies to work with them. Um, they really didn't open up the gates until really COVID happened. And so that's where there was a rush to teams and you saw everybody's marketing over the summer. Uh, is that, you know, they didn't allow a lot of people to have access to the APIs to actually get a lot of this stuff done. And so, you know, the phone is not free with Teams. Is that beware of the hidden costs. It's not just you get a base pricing for the licensing and everything, it just works right out of the box. Is that direct routing acts, you know, adds additional cost and complexity to every single deal. And so the, the mobile application also, lot, you know, lacks basic... Um, video capabilities on it as well. And so they must rely on the Wi-Fi and the cellular data basically for the phone calls. And so, you know, 
having the ability not even support um, soft phones with teams is that that's also another thing that you're adding in here when it comes to competitive things is that whether you're choosing teams or you're choosing FUs is that when you start adding these little things up, it's a no-brainer why customers would rather utilize us than Microsoft Teams. And we put together kind of a little competitive cheat sheet so that you can see the different things up here like poor mobile voice, the low SLA, um, the lack of call recording, um, all these different things of, of what makes us um, the competitive choice here. And so when we go through and we look at things like, you know, a chart that we have basically up on Fuse.com is that it breaks down basically everything in there from uh, PBX replacement all the way down the list uh, to where we're actually coexisting inside of Microsoft. And so when you compare apples to apples on it, it's not really fair because again, Microsoft is not a phone company um, and promo provider, we are. And so working with someone that's gonna have uh, the much stronger SLA and more, more stronger product that you can rely on is really what you need to see. And so, I mean, I think, I think, I, and I think I said it earlier, but a lot of our larger our enterprises, even our mid market, are choosing not to be all in with one custom, one product. They don't want all their eggs in one basket from obviously a reliability standpoint, but they also feel, you know, the cost asks so there's reliability, there's cost, and there's usability. And being able to bifurcate the two and live in two different product sets is the way to, way to be. Three starts getting too many, four starts getting too many but separating the telephony collaboration or the telephony contact center from the true, you know, document management, you know, kind of the Teams-esque original OneDrive, all that kind of stuff. That's where we see people going. So this plays right into your hands. So I, lo I love where you're going with this. Yeah, and so when, when you look at the grand scale of things too, is that Microsoft with Fuse, is that, you know, the, the fact that we have basically all the contacts presence and the ability to click the call, we have the integrations in, in Outlook, uh, Microsoft Dynamic, the OneDrive. We have all those capabilities that work inside Microsoft with our product. And then the things that we've added this year is basically the calling into the direct routing. And then the, the Fuse in the uh, Ed browser. These are things that we've added over the summertime that basically it's new functionality for us. But when you're looking at it as a whole and how we coexist with Microsoft is that there's a pretty seamless integration there um, that's, you know, fiscally responsible, I'll say, um, to, to basically take a look at so that when you do have these projects come up and it's really important that you bring in a partner like Packet Fusion because with all the products out there, everybody's got great marketing companies. But understanding where to go to and what partners to lean on, that's why a partner like Packet Fusion could add so much value to it because when you have these challenges and you want to work with Microsoft Teams is that they're going to put you in front of the right providers that can actually do the job. You know, even this platform that we're using on today with, with Zoom, Zoom is a great product and they're an up and comer um, with their phone capabilities and everything else. But being able to utilize Zoom inside of Microsoft Teams the way that we can, not even in the same ballpark. And so, Really, when it comes down to it, is it lean on your, your partners like Packet Fusion because they're going to be your trust advisor in this space and they're going to read you, lead you down basically the right direction of choosing the right product. And again, is that they're very agnostic when it comes to it. If they know that we're not going to be a fit, we're not even going to get a call. And so it's really important that you lean on Packet Fusion when these decisions and, and these questions come up. Love the plugs. Yeah. So with that, basically, that's everything that I was going to cover today, what we wanted to do now. Um, and if anybody has any questions for me after the fact. I got one. My contact information. I got a, I got a question. Sure. Uh, I mean, I know we spent a lot of time on the integration with Teams. And, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. I get it. None of us, none of you, no one wants to be relegated down to just trunking and just telephony and a subset of the whole world. Maybe you can talk about, you know, your worldwide domination and your plan and where you guys are going a little bit on just, you know, fighting teams. Like, you know, there is half your business, probably more than 90% of your business today is fighting teams now that they're so prevalent. Everybody's like, okay, they're letting us play nice. We'll play nice too. But majority of your time you're fighting against these guys. So what, where do you see yourselves going and, 
give me some some futures and some ideas of the fuse fuse vision non teams. Yeah, so I think that one of the things that that that's great about fuse is that we've been doing this actually a really long time. We're the best kept secret in the industry, and I know our marketing people will probably hate me for saying that, but it's true. Is that one of the things that we probably don't do the greatest job at is marketing our product out to the world. A lot of stuff we do is through analysts and and through their our channel community um, is where we work with most of our customers on it. So when we look at roadmaps and everything else is that the fact that we own our entire stack is that we have control and destiny to whatever that we want to do. And we actually listen to our customers um, when they have use cases that come up. For example, waste management was, they came to us and said, we'd like to put you on our, our Samsung tablets. But the, what we don't want to do is that we want to put some restrictions to it. And um, if the... We don't want people basically on a tablet as they're driving. So we actually worked with waste management to where as soon as that uh, driver took off and went more than five miles an hour, the whole Samsung tab tablet and the ability to make a fuse call couldn't be had. And so that was working with them and Samsung on creating that capability. So the fact that we do own our own stack and we have control of our destiny and the product is that there's a lot of people, we're not tied to, we're not a publicly traded company, so we're not tied to investors. We're tied to our customers and how they want to use the product. And so when we go against a lot of competitors out there like Zoom and Teams and everybody else, is that, you know, I touched about it earlier, where our company shines is that we take those complicated environments and make them simple. And so where we shine is getting in with the customers, realizing where the pain points are, in making sure that the implementation of the product goes as smooth and as easy as possible because that's where most deals in the first implementation phase go sideways. So that's where we spend a lot of time, focus, um, and we you know, spend a lot of money on R&D and support to make sure that we're evolving with our customers as you know, certain challenges come up. Yeah, that's cool. I appreciate that. I, I know you guys mentioned Magic Quadrant, Forrester, Upper Right Quadrant, all these analyst stuff. You know, you guys are where you need to be with that for the UCAS portion of that. It's incredibly hard to have UCAS and CCAS and both be up there. Not many, if anybody actually does that. I know you guys have your integrated contact center, which gets the, you know, 80%, 50%, whatever the number is of line size of, of needs out there. But once you get into these customers that have more sophisticated contact center needs, I saw a slide earlier, but let's, let's talk about that for a second, what you do. And yeah, you do it. contact center is, is um, it's exploding because, you know, a lot of people love the capabilities of it and everything else. In Fuse, we have our own internal platform um, that's extremely uh, efficient. It's cost effective and it's got a lot of bells and whistles that, uh, make the, everything work on it from routing calls to um, having an, an easy administration portal to where uh, management can route certain calls and, and have calls waiting for everybody is that we have some bells and whistles to it. But once you want that omni uh, channel experience, you know, the fact that we work with both 5.9 and in contact in the contact center is a big deal. And it's a seamless integration with both companies is that we have strong um, strategic alliances with them to where, um, when we sell a deal, the deal can be sold on our paper. And so that's relatively a big deal. And we're, uh, we're partners with both, both those in Contact 5.9. So we like both of those solutions. So I love that. That's cool. Yeah. Again, if we can get access to the APIs, we can also work with companies like TalkDesk as well. And so we're not just um, uh, limited to those, you know, the three options there is that depending on how we can get access to the APIs, we can basically work with anybody. What, what percentage do you feel of your customer base is, are, are using your integrated contact center? Most of them, and you have a handful of the other integrations or what, what would you say? Well, you know, we have a customer like Waste Management, which, again, was, which uses 10% um, of their workforce uses our contact center, 3,000 seats. And so um, one of the things that they liked about it was the fact that, um, when they compared it in cost to the, to the other products out there, you know, all in with Fuse and the contact center was about $70 a month, as opposed to, you know, some of the other private providers where it was like 350. Yeah. It gets crazy. Once you start putting the workforce management reporting and 
that point. Like channel, yeah, the omni-channel, all that kind of stuff. To totally, totally agree. Yeah, and it gets up there. So, you know, we see basically roughly about 10% of um, our users are basically using our own built-in contact center. And again, because there's not a lot of sophistication that's required in it. And so if they really want that presence and, you know, if it's someone like American Express, which, which is going to want the best customer experience possible, they're going to want every bell and whistle that is imaginable inside the contact center. And that's really not where Fuse is going to be a fit there. That's where you're going to lean on someone who's, um, you know, uh, in the magic quadrant and a good provider to use. In, in contact, 5.9, talk desk, those are the strong guys out there. Genesis yep. is well. we, we love We love all those guys. Cool. Yeah. Great, Mark. I love all this. What else? Any other any other fun little uh, tidbits? Well, we got we got about a couple minutes left. Any other yeah. thoughts? You want to wrap this up? And yeah, I think that one know. of the things that you know we're doing uh, from the sales organization too is that we understand that COVID um, has put a, a big financial challenge with a lot of people. And one of the things that's great about Fuse is that we don't start billing you until the service is up and running. So. If you have a thousand employees in the company and you're only lighting up 250 in the department at a time, is that you're not paying for that contract from day one like our competitors? Every one of our competitors basically starts billing you as soon as that contract is signed. And so, with that, is that with the way that we bill on it is that you don't get a bill from us until we start, um, you know, issuing out the licenses and getting them stood up to where people are using them. So it's all based on usage. A lot, a lot of other people don't do that. No, they don't. And if you're challenged, which is the fact that, uh, you know, again, that COVID has brought to us, is that we are offering things like free months that we'll, we'll do for customers um, to actually, you know, help them out during this time. I mean, it's, it's a lot of times, especially with the end of the year coming up, people are asking, you know, what can you do on pricing and everything else? It's, the way that we bill is it's pretty easy. And if you want a free month or two that we can throw into the deal, We'll include that because we know that um, if we can save some jobs out there and, and help you know people through this, giving a month or two free away on the service uh, is something that you know as a company we, we should be responsible of. And so we're we're leveraging that out there to anybody on the call. Just reach out to Packet Fusion and let them know that you want to talk about a project and you have teams in it and want to take a look at Fuse. And so we'll include that. Anybody that's on this call today. If they want uh, a month or two free of service, we can work that into the opportunity. Guys, it was, hey, Mark, that was awesome. Thank you so much. If if anybody wants to get in touch with us, Packet Fusion, to help you with your UCAS or your CCAS, which is phones or contact center, SD-WAN, kind of transformation, please reach out to me, mpingator at packetfusion.com, and uh, we can help start the process. Mark, you guys are awesome. Thanks for all you guys have done for us, believing in us. We believe in you. Um, until next time. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. <laughs>